Well, good Saturday. Today, we are going to learn, I guess learn, how to do this cup. This is a pearl, flatback pearl rhinestone cup that I started off with to be my first cup. So here are the steps that I took to do this. This is an iridescent wine glass tumbler that I had. I got some Krylon flat white primer and paint to spray paint over the color so that it has a proper background. I have seen online where with rhinestoning it is important to have your background or your base to be somewhat of the same color or to it's either you have to make it contrast against the rhinestones or you want it to go with the rhinestones so with the pearls even though I didn't go with opalescent which would probably be like make it even like make it pop even more um, I just use a flat white and it worked out perfectly or so I thought it had a little water spots but I'll explain that later in the video but here's that and here's a few clips of me taking a break and going to see the cows. We got permission to go on this property and they just let us ride around just to see the cows because my daughter is obsessed with cows. As you can see, I am just decked out in rhinestones and pearls and everything. The rhinestones that you see, I'm in the middle of separating them because I bought a box like this from Hobby Lobby and it was like $7 or $6. I recently just went there and it went down to $5. So I don't know if Hobby Lobby is just trying to get rid of the rhinestones or these kind of rhinestones because they do have smaller packages of nicer rhinestones that they have. So I don't know if it's just that brand or what. I have been separating. This came just like this. This already came in a package. I love this pack. It's shiny and pretty and I love it. Like just looking at it from this angle looks so gorgeous. But looking at them up close, they're just so clean and just sparkly. And I'm looking over at the one that was in the box and this kind of looks, I don't know, on camera it's translating good, but to the naked eye, it almost looks a little too dull for me. So it's like the bigger you get, the more you risk um, it looking dull. But I've been separating, the pearls were easy to separate out. There's only a few sizes. There was literally one, two, three, four sizes. So I had to put them in different little containers because I ran out of containers to put in because the square, even though this package has, it was cheap and stuff, it has a lot. Like I'm still picking them out. The pearls, I feel like there's, there wasn't as much, but these silver rhinestones, there was a whole lot. So you pay very cheap for these rhinestones and you get a whole bunch, just FYI. But Today's project, we are starting off with this. As you can tell, my genius butt, this is going to be my cup. I am not going to try to sell this, obviously, because it's a little, it's already like dingy. I don't know what went on with this cup or what I did to make it so dingy, but luckily this is just our base color. But um, one thing to have in mind, when you're painting tumblers, and you go from a cold house to a really hot, you know, outdoors area, I forget that condensation happens. And that's exactly what happened here. As you can tell, there is this little crack. Somebody's probably going to have a panic attack because I am not, you know, being nitpicky and covering it. I did put some Mod Podge um, acrylic sealer over it. So we're just... I'm half-assing this cup to see how much of a difference it is to like what I really 
I don't know. I just like to mess up and screw things up the first time because when you mess up and make mistakes on purpose, you can see, you can have more, I don't know how, what I'm trying to say. You'll have more of like a learning experience from it. I like to mess up on purpose. I like to try things half ass on the first or few times. One, because I mess up a lot. Two, it's okay to make mistakes because you learn from them. And I feel like people who make the most mistakes learn the most. So I am not a perfectionist here, obviously, because we have a chip right here or a spot that did not get quite painted right there. And a lot of people are like, well, why didn't you sell off the ends? I do not have an edge trimmer yet. So I'm hoping in the future I'll have an edge trimmer to, tr you know, tape off and trim the top and the bottom but with it being a different color because it was an iridescent we're going to put pearls on it and see how it lasts on a third video I will be selling an actual tumbler this is one that I got um, obviously I'm not going to you know use this part or rhinestone the top part I'm just gonna do the rest of it um, the edge parts of it depending on how this week goes and next week goes I might go and get an edge trimmer or order one but I'm just not sure right now so for now we're gonna put some pearls on this so I'm going to do the first row and I was told after you do the first row you kind of just lay it down like that and let the rhinestone settle and then once it like the glue gets thick it or hardens enough that you can keep going and it doesn't affect the top row let's go into a time lapse I also forgot to say I'm going to use e6000 glue this one says permanent bond and it's waterproof so hopefully this is good it says it's good with resin a lot of stuff online says that e6000 glue actually messes up resin stuff but this is these are pearls it says don't do it on the flat back rhinestones because the flat back rhinestones, if you don't know, it has a reflective back and it says that the E6000 glue will actually eat it up. So I might do a couple of rhinestones just on like something random in my house or you know what, I could do it. I think I'm going to do them on this. So I took the tin. This is the left rhinestone is without any glue. It's the rhinestone by itself. The one on the right is with the E6000 glue. And as you can tell, there's a bunch of bubbles underneath. Some people might say, oh, it's like more glitter or whatever. But you do not want this because it's eating at the metallic backing. So it's not going to be as clear. You're not going to get the rhinestone. You're actually destroying the metallic backing, which is destroying the rhinestone, which obviously to me means that it's going to look like it has air bubbles and your clients are going to think that you know there's a seal broken or there's something wrong with the rhinestones and it's going to look dull over time now this is with the fusion tack glue on the left and it comes out white but as you can see here after a day it dries clear and it makes that left rhinestone look more it has more clarity more clarity and it you can see the rhinestone for what it is you can see the shape of the rhinestone and how it bounces the light around it and so I highly recommend some fusion tack for your rhinestones but for these pearls the e6000 glue sorry my husband is mowing is perfect for this project so I'm gonna let the time-lapse roll and as you can tell before I get off of the you know voiceover I scattered it as much as I could I did the first line of rhinestones I laid it down face down so the rhinestones could lay flat and then I got started on the rest of the cup and as I was putting it down I would put it down so when I picked it up I could pick up the non rhinestone part because you want to leave those rhinestones alone oh and I forgot I guess I'm not getting off this voiceover. I got smaller little pearls from the store and I took out like four different sizes and I filled in all the holes. You can't see it on camera very well, but in real life, it makes such a difference. I highly recommend the more you fill it up, 
it just it looks better in person and that's I rather it look better in person and get more details in person than in on a camera because it's just it adds like a different thing so it looks good on camera but when you get closer there's just so much more detail and I wish the camera would pick that up and I will have to do some close-up shots on Etsy so people can see the details on it but it just it makes such a difference always 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 filling gaps and that's what I've learned online is to just get those little bitty fillers and even though it's really 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 tedious at times it helps so much and it looks so good so okay now I can let the time lapse roll So it's kind of funny you can't tell or maybe you can maybe it's just my eyes they're really bad but this is zoom this is zoomed all the way out so it's like can you tell I think doing the minor or the small detail pearls I don't even think you can really see until you get up close close but as you can tell, I did the really fine, small rhinestones. I did like a cluster effect. I think it would have been more beneficial if I did everything all together. And not just fill up the space later because as you can tell, well, I don't know, because even with the others, I don't think it would have really made a difference. Maybe if I pressed, like, pushed some of these down. But also, you can't put these bubbles too far down, because luckily, I got lucky right here on my left, or on this thumb right here. I got lucky that I didn't put it too far down, but you can't. And this... Well, it has a little bit of a roll to it, but not from the pearls. It's from the cup itself. Because, again, this is like a wine glass, and it is flat, but also this padding. No, there's not. It's just the cup. The cup's wobbling. And it is an old cup. It's just, I keep good care of these cups. So, I'm glad I get to reuse it. This is... Like, I think this would be really pretty for, like, a bride's cup. Or, like, a bride-to-be. But I also feel like it's a really nice and classy cup. So, if you're at, a, like, a white tie event, <laughs> not really. But I'm just, like, if you're at an event with the tuxedos and stuff, like, this would be a nice, or my nice way of, you know, doing that. <laughs> Maybe not, but, Yeah. Thank y'all for watching. Next week, next week's video will be another rhinestoning video. But if I, if y'all want me to break up the rhinestoning from instead of doing back to back to back, because I like to do either back to back to back. Mm, let me think about it. I like to do mostly my back to back videos on back to back projects. So technically. This would be a project and I would get started on another project that's different from whatever, I guess, subject 
I'm doing that week. So if I'm doing sewing, if that project takes up a few weeks, then I let that project take up a few weeks, you know, do multiple videos on it. But if I'm doing crochet, it's kind of the same thing, but some projects are just faster than others. And I feel like if I do a lot of videos on sewing, then I should do a few videos on other. So maybe it's just like what I'm doing for the month, but I never last longer than two weeks on one singular thing. But right now, rhinestoning, I'm trying to get all of my stuff together so that I can get stuff out for Christmas. So, trying to do, this is my cup that I'm keeping and I'm going to do some tests with it. So maybe that will be next week's video along with rhinestoning cups. I have so many cups. I just painted them today and I'm just, I'm excited to start on it. So, and if y'all have trypophobia or like hate holes or like bumps or whatever me too but this does not bother me maybe because it's pearls but it doesn't bother me so but i hope you enjoyed this video hopefully i'll get this out soon and not late but the rest of the night i'm going to edit this video and go to bed and hopefully y'all like it so gotta edit have a good night and i hope y'all enjoyed this bye